Uh, this seemed like a good time to do the long overdue uh, Top Studio Tools video for the Give and Grip because I've taken mine apart to clean it. So for those unfamiliar with the Give and Grip, it's a way of gripping a pot. It's got three sliding feet. It holds, sits on your wheel head, so it's a wheel head attachment um, with three sliders that slide in and out. And the idea being that it centers and holds your piece for you so you don't have to tap center and then stick it down with wadges of clay or wet the rim or whatever, whatever way you're using, sticky bat or whatever. Um, this physically holds it in place so there's less chance of it flying off. And it's quite a simple thing. They're relatively pricey in some respects, but for the amount of use you get out of one, they're well worth the money. Um, but basically the idea is you get a base plate, which has these spirals coming out the center. There's three spirals because it's three feet. And then you've got three adjustable slider feet on the bottom that you set to match your wheel head. And, oh, no, what? I about to put it in place, but I actually rebuilt it. And then you've got a top plate with um, uh, the three slots to, for the feet to slide out. So the idea being, you just literally fit the two of them together. And there's a big rubber band that just holds it in place. So that doesn't need to be under a huge amount of tension. And then get it set on your wheel head and you've got three sliding feet. These are interchangeable. You can get wider ones if you're throwing bigger pots. You can get green ones which have a little bit of adjustment in them so if your pot's not um, completely centered itself, as in if you've got a wobbly pot or something with a, a deformed, like a, an altered rim, you can manually go in and adjust it so that you center the piece with feet that are slightly adjusted from center. But um, with the three standard feet, I think believe these are the previous model, the new one has lower profile ones, which I quite like the look of. Um, there are advantages to the tall ones, which is at least for now, Hartley and Noble make these little um, plate molds that I designed that sit on top of these feet and are obviously designed for the feet that I've got. I don't know if the lower profile ones work with them, but anyway. Um, you see, you turn it and they slide in and out. And I use mine for just about the, just about everything really. So um, trimming, wax resisting for glazing, and then sanding the bottom of the pot. So they'll come on here three times through the process. Um, and I'll just do a quick kind of demonstration. So I'd be trimming uh, a strippy strip of timber, but all you do is put it in place, make sure it's actually centered. Um, and because sometimes if you have it off center, it won't, it, it binds, but it's not centered, so it's off center. That's fine. And then it is gripped and perfectly centered. And so now um, I need to use a deflector plate to stop the trimmings going all over the floor because it raises the height of the wheel head by that much. Uh, some wheels possibly won't need that, but I do have a video on how I made this. It's very simple, but um, the trick that I did was I had the, each section angles outwards. So as you can see, it sort of flares outwards because if they were straight sided, it wouldn't work. I will post a link to the video just in case anyone is interested. Um, but yeah, so what I would do to trim a piece uh, is I throw my pieces to essentially the thickness I want them. Um, so I have very minimal trimming. But for a tumbler, I would just skim a little off the centre of the bottom of the piece. Um, Use a firm rib to burnish. Gets the clay smooth. Um, I think I've got a longer video on that somewhere. If I have, I will link that. But basically, it works better with smooth clays. If you've got a groggy clay, the grog will reappear as it's fired. But if you've got a smooth clay, you can burnish it to basically a mirror finish now, and it pretty much stays that smooth. So you do minimal sanding later. Got a video on these Zine modeling tools, but they're really useful for this. 
which is that I define a foot ring and add a swirl in the centre and the fact that this is a, a metal ball and it's, it's um, on the larger side, this is the, I think the largest one they do, uh, XST28 whichever one that is, um, because it's so rounded you get a really nice smooth edge to it where if you used a, a smaller thing or a, a trimming tool you'd have to go back and polish the edges to make them smooth. This is automatically rounded and then I just soften up the lip a little more with a soft rib and that's it, I'm done. So about 60 seconds if I'm not talking it through as I do it um, and then put a uh, logo stamp on the foot. And all of that done in probably less time than it would take me to tap center and stick it down because I'm not very good at tap centering. Whether or not one of these is worth the money to you will depend on a bunch of factors. They are time saving and they are very efficient. So if you've got a hundred things to trim and all the things are going to be perfectly centered if you put them on here so you're not, there's, you don't need to make any adjustments or fiddle with it, you can just plonk it on, trim, take it off. They will save a, an amount of time per thing. And so I bought this with the money that I got from a wholesale order. Um, I used this to, that to justify buying this and I would not go back. It proved itself it more, more than easily paid for itself in that one job. Um, obviously if you're a hobby potter or you're throwing things that won't sit well on this, then you know, it's probably not worthwhile. But for anyone who's making a few pots and they tend to be things that if you gripped centred with three points would be centred, so as in you don't need to go back in and adjust it, uh, it's very useful. It reduces the chance of one of the, the wads of clay coming unstuck and losing a piece. Um, so it's a, they are a bit pricey, they are really worth the money in my opinion. Uh, but obviously how long it takes to justify that price depends on how much you make and how many times you're going to use it through the process. But yeah, as I say, I would use it <coughs> to trim like that, then that would get bisque fired and come back. I'll use it to wax resist. Um, I'll see if I've got any videos to hand of that. So I'll, I might have a, a video of each stage of the process. I might not. If I can edit, do, I'll edit them in now. But yeah, so I'll wax resist a band on Again, you just plonk it back in. I can wax resist a kiln load of stuff in a couple of minutes, well, not a couple of minutes, but like 10 minutes or so for a kiln load of stuff, where to do it a more long-winded way would take significantly more time. So again, it's just saving a small amount of time per piece, but when you scale that up to a lot of pieces, it's worthwhile. Whether that's worth it to you or not depends on your circumstances. Um, but they are excellent. I highly recommend them and um, I would replace this in a second if anything happened to it. Uh, and that's about all I have to say on it. I'll just show you now I've got the setup, how the Hartley and Noble things work. But they've got three feet on the bottom, so what you would do is line the foot up. There we go. So that's now gripped and centered. So what you've got is a drape mold like you would normally buy just loose and you'd roll a sheet out on a slab roller or with a rolling pin, you'd drape it over, trim around the bottom and then remove it and you've got a plate. The advantage to having it on as a wheel attachment is that you can now compress with a rib while it's on here and then I, um, it's up to you whether or not you do this. You could trim a foot in. But what I do is I raise the foot up by adding slip. So I would just get slip in a, a dripper or a syringe and just raise a slip foot, which will give you like a maybe five mil tops kind of thick foot. But what you've got is a perfectly flat plate, consistently made, and then you can add a foot very easily uh, and trim that edge very easily. And then obviously it just lifts off. So they're really useful. Um, one thing I would say, because I do get questions every now and then, if you're doing it that way, you want to 
work with pretty dry clay because if your clay is wet what happens is it sticks to this and then shrinks quite a lot and those two things are bad one of them you could get away with but um, the fact that before it firms up enough to release on its own it will have shrunk too much to release means you want clay on the drier side and don't compress in excessively to the side because that's where it will really stick and bind and um, that's only if you're having trouble removing it just because I know some people have asked and you'll in my experience that will only really happen if you're starting with wet clay which obviously from a slab roller you can work with fine but on uh, a shape like this where it's got a basically straight side vertical side to it if the clay shrinks it'll stick so one thing to be aware of but um, yep I'll try and link everything I'd said in things below as well as all the other videos in this series um, and if there's anything that you've seen me use and think warrants a video that I haven't done a video for please let me know because I kind of started this series and then got sidetracked and it's something I, I need to revisit um, but any suggestions I'll just throw up a quick video for so please let me know if there's anything you'd like to see a description of um, yeah that's it